romantic <laughs> life. Whoa, you two work really well together. We, do. Yeah. we always say it's that. Like, it's like we spend right. a lot of yeah. time together. Yeah. Well, anyway, we're going to look today at two other things that work well together. Oh, and as we think about sharing our faith with words, and actions, oh. two things that work oh. very well together, yeah. as well as having some fun, playing games and telling jokes. Um, yeah, you'll work out why that is if you watch the rest of the session. Warm up. Okay, for our warm up game today, we are we, we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit of musical statues. Oh, okay. But slightly different. Usually, when you do musical statues, you dance to the music. <laughs> but I can't dance, so we are gonna do sporting actions. Yes. Well, I'm not particularly great at them either, but we're gonna have a go because this is the starting line. The starting line. Mm. Okay, so first action is. Squats. Squats. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm good with that. Right. Cue the music. <laughs> oh, I think I think we. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, um, next action is. Um, hmm. don't know what to pick. Basketball? Basketball! Let's do basketball. Okay, shooting hoops. Ready, cue the music. Okay, I wonder how you did at home. Did you manage to freeze at the right time? Okay, let's go for headers. Headers, headers. okay. Okay, cue the music. Okay, I hope you managed to freeze along. Let's go for one more running on the spot. Okay. Nice and easy. Cue the music. Oh, I nearly fell over. <laughs> well done. Too fast. <laughs> too, was going far too fast. Wonder how you did. Did you manage to freeze quicker than us? I don't know. Hmm. Still frozen. Still frozen. We will. Uh, we'll, we'll put her out in the sun to thaw later. Let's get on with the rest of the starting line. Ref's whistle. Your first ref's whistle question today is, what's your favorite joke? Hmm. Why not speak to anyone that is around you and tell them your favorite joke, hear theirs, see if you laugh, find out whose is best. You said a funny joke and heard a funny joke. Now, let's find out what, what is your favourite joke, Emily? Okay, so if seagulls fly over the sea, mm -hmm. what flies over the bay? Bagels. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, sounds like bagels. Well, I can see I'm not as good at coming up with jokes on the spot like Emily. Um, so I, I got our Laugh on the Loo book oh, out of our yes. toilet. Not actually pulled it out of the toilet, um, just in the toilet room. And it's got loads of great jokes. Um, so, I mean, well, let's... Uh, here's some good ones. Um, toilet paper. What a rip-off. Um, did you hear the joke about the toilet? No, no. No, never mind, it's too dirty. Yeah. I think we should yeah. stop you now, he's just going to keep giving you toilet jokes. Sport, sports ones. Okay, one more. Uh, why is football such a messy sport? 
Don't know. Because the players dribble on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why, why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants? Because right. he got a hole in one! Wow. Okay, we're going to pause you there. Um, okay, I've got one more for you. One Thanks. more. Why was Cinderella really bad at football? I really like this one. Because she kept running away from the ball! Yes! <laughs> Unless you know the story of Cinderella, you will not get that it. one. Never mind. Like anyway, it. hopefully what? you've had a little bit she had to run away. of a laugh. <laughs> Coaches Tactics. When we hear a great joke, we want to tell others because we know it'll make them laugh and we want to share a moment of happiness with them. When me and Tabs go to a great restaurant, we tell people about it because we want them to know how good it is and be able to go and taste the food for themselves. When a sports team wins the league or a tournament, the fans will tell everyone they know about it. I don't know if you know anyone like that, but I do. And when we're excited about things, we tend to tell people. And even better than jokes and restaurants and sports teams, as a Christian, I believe that Jesus lived on earth and did incredible things and died for me and rose again. And I know that becoming a Christian was the best decision that I ever made and I ever will make. So if I know that becoming a Christian is the best decision that I've ever made, should I keep that to myself? If I know that God has made a massive difference in my life and he can do that for others too, I believe, should I tell others about it or not? I think that's the best thing that I could do for someone else. So that's why I do this what we're doing now and I share with people like you what I believe but it's not just people like me and vicars or people who work in churches that can share what they believe with others anyone can and this is great but the best way for Christians to share what they believe with others is by personally telling the people they know about God Imagine what would happen if all Christians shared their faith with the people they know. There are over 2 billion Christians in the church worldwide. That's nearly a third of the world's population. If all Christians shared what they believe with people that they know, then surely almost everyone in the world would hear how much God loves them and the good news of Jesus. Wow! Now, this doesn't need to be one big one-off conversation. In fact, it's, it's better if it's not, I think. I think the best way for Christians to share their faith with others is through lots of conversations. Perhaps not like starting out by blurting out, hi, God loves you, Jesus died for you and rose again, and you can have a relationship with me too, <sighs> and then walk off. But being a bit more natural, having normal conversations with people, sharing bits at a time like you would do in normal life, giving them a chance to ask questions that could lead to some incredible chats. When I was in school, I found that the easiest way to start talking about what I believed was to talk about church, perhaps really naturally when someone asked me what I did at the weekend. We've looked at what the church is in another session. A lot of people understand the idea of church. So I'd tell my friends at school about my friends at church. I'd tell them about this song that we sing that I thought they might like to listen to. I'd tell them about the youth club that I really liked that was so much fun and things like that. I found it a lot easier to start by talking about church and then gradually having more and more conversations about what I believe. And sometimes it was really easy and my friends would come to church with me when I invited them, but sometimes it wasn't so easy. And they didn't really want to talk about it or perhaps sometimes people disagreed with me. And all these years later, I don't know what effect those conversations had on them. Maybe some of them are Christians or maybe another Christian friend is sharing what they believe with them today. We don't always get to see 
what happens. We don't always get to see people become a Christian, but we do get to play our part in them hearing about God. The main influence for me becoming a Christian was my mum. And she still has a massive influence on my faith today. But what's really amazing is that in school, my mum wasn't a Christian, but her best friend, Linda, was. So Linda told my mum about Jesus and prayed for her for 30 years before my mum became a Christian. I love that. Linda didn't give up because she knew that becoming a Christian would change my mum's life. And it did. And now I'm here sharing with you because Linda shared her faith with her friend all those years ago. Halftime challenge. Your halftime game is a matching pairs relay. I would like you to get 12 bits of paper and a pen. Or if you've printed out the activity sheets, then you just need to cut out the words and find a pen. So press pause and go and do that before hitting play again. Right, so you should have a pen and 12 bits of paper that can be small or big, whatever works for you. If you don't have the words printed, then I'd like you to write one of these words on each bit of paper. Are you ready? If you need to pause and play, then that's okay. Ben, you need to write that on one piece of paper. Timon. Chips. Glove. Deck, Pumba, Fish, Athletics, Jerry's, Ant, Jessica Ennis Hill, and Hand. Now, I'd like you, once you've got your papers and they have all 12 words written on them, I'd like to mix them up and lay them on the floor, face down, in three rows of four. You can play this on your own or with someone else at home. I, I think it's more fun with someone else. So your starting line for this game is the paper grid. So that will be down in front of you now. And you need to choose a place to run to and put something there as a marker. So you run from the starting line to the marker and back. And when you get back to the papers, you turn two papers over, one at a time. And if they are two things that go together as a pair, like fish and chips, then you leave them turn the right side up. And if they aren't things that work well as a pair, then turn them back over and try to remember what was where. And if you're playing with someone else, then the next person will run to the marker and back and turn two papers over and again, Try and work, work out, do they work well as a pair? If so, leave them turned up. If they don't, then turn them back over. Keep playing the game until all the pairs have been found. They'll be remembering where they are. And whoever turns over the most pairs is the winner. So pause and go and play. Ref's whistle. Okay, here is your second ref's whistle question. What two things do you think go together really well? It could be two sporting players, two types of food, two characters, or any other two things that you can think of. Okay, so have a discussion with the people around you. Tactics. 
There are loads of things and people that go together really well. When I used to go and play football with my friends, there were two of my friends, that both happened to be called Luke, who played so well together that I'd be almost certain we'd win if I was on their team. And the Bible tells us about two things that don't just go well together, but can't be separated. So in a book called James, chapter 2, verses 14 to 17, there is a paraphrase of the Bible called the message that shares it this way. I, I really like this. It says, dear friends, do you think you'll get anywhere in this if you learn all the right words, but never do anything? Does merely talking about faith indicate that a person really has it? For instance, you come upon an old friend dressed in rags and half starved and you say, good morning friend, be clothed in Christ, be filled with the Holy Spirit and walk off without providing so much as a coat or a cup of soup. Where does that get you? Isn't it obvious that God talk without God acts is outrageous nonsense. I can already hear one of you agreeing by saying, sounds good, you take care of the faith department, I'll handle the works department. Not so fast. You can no more show me your works apart from your faith than I can show you my faith apart from my works. Faith and works, works and faith fit together hand in glove. Faith and works. We'll use the word action. Faith and action, words and actions fit together hand in glove. This tells us that as well as telling people about God, Christians should also show people how much God loves them by how they live their lives and what they do for others. We can read the Bible and hear stories about what Jesus did on earth. Did he solely tell people about God or show, act, show people that he loved them through his actions? No, he did both. He helped people to learn about God. He told them how much God loves them. He invited them to be part of God's family and he healed the sick. He calmed the storm. He fed the hungry and more. Words and actions. Many hospitals and schools were started by Christians who put their faith into action because they knew that God wanted them to care for others. Slavery was made illegal because of a Christian called William Wilberforce and his friends. Martin Luther King Jr. who started the civil rights movement so that one day all people would be treated equally regardless of their skin colour was a Christian. Corrie ten Boom helped many Jews escape from the Nazis during the Holocaust in World War II by hiding them in her home. Loads of incredible Christians have done incredible things throughout history. And today, many Christians put their faith into action by small daily acts, as well as big projects. Food banks, counselling centres, schools, hospitals, anti-slavery charities, street pastors and more. If you're a Christian, you can put your faith into action today. And if you're not a Christian, what's stopping you from helping others? VAR for our VAR this week, we're going to meet a Christian. We're going to go and hear from our friend Richard and find out how he puts his faith into action with the charity that he's involved with running. It's a great charity called Compassion Acts, who do loads of things for people in need in our town in Southport. He, he does things like the, the food bank that people might know quite a bit about, where, you, where loads of people go and drop off food at collection points and then that food is, is sent to food banks where it can be shared with people who are most in need of it. Really great stuff the Compassion Acts, the charity does. So let's hear a little bit from Richard about what that looks like. So faith in action, what does it mean to me? I'm my Christian faith, I put it into action um, every day really as part of a big team. I'm the chief executive of Compassion Acts, which is 
the charity that runs the food bank, food pantry, debt advice, welfare benefits advice, next steps. And we do sort of seasonal bags and things that meet people's needs at the time that they're at. So a lot of food involved in our charity, uh, but a lot of love because that's effectively what it is. And we're a big team of volunteers and staff. And I see the people in our team being the, the people who put food in their collection points in the supermarket. So that could be you and your families. I see people in our team being the people in the churches who pray for us and who give to us. I see the people in our team being the people in businesses in the town who are very active and work on our behalf. So we have lots of volunteers, a few staff, but we're all one team, all pulling towards one goal. And what is the goal? Well, the goal is that we live in a society where we don't need food banks, where we shouldn't need to do this. We live in a society where people um, are treated well, where love wins. Now we know because of our faith that love wins. But we know that the world is also a place that's full of lots of complicated stuff and lots of pain. So we do what we can on a practical level every single day. And that's what gets me out of bed. That's what makes me do the job I do. And I'm so passionate about it um, because we have a great team, because we have a clear vision and we know what we want to do. And Young people can be involved, families can be involved. And it might be that you're in a position at some time where you need us as well, because we work for people who are just about managing and holding on as well, not just people who are in a massive crisis. So that's why I do the job I do. It's more than a job. It's more than a job. It's a bit of my life and my life as a follower of Jesus, as a person of faith. Your final whistle challenge is, you've guessed it, word and action. So who are you going to tell about God? Is there a trusted adult that can help you to think about what to say and support you as you share God with others? Also, what are you going to do to put your faith into action? You could think through a normal day and decide when, where and how you might show kindness to others. You could think about people that need help and ask a grown-up at home to help you to give food to a food bank or support a charity that already exists. Or you could think of an issue in the world that you would like to make a difference in and create a plan of action with a trusted adult of what you're going to do about it. There are loads of things that you can do and they don't need to be big projects. When regularly done, small acts of kindness and love can make a huge difference. So what are you going to do? Write your ideas down on your activity sheet and chat to a grown up about how they can be part of it. I'll let you get on with that and I'll hopefully see you soon. Bye.